um, when I heard, I mean actually to be honest one of the first things I did when we were planning our FESPA I was pushing some information on LinkedIn saying that we were going to be here covering for live one of the first people that reached out to me was actually Rafa right Rafa, Rafa? yeah Rafa yeah and uh, Rafa is uh, working for a Spanish company called Plast Gromit. And when you see, in a moment, we will, we will have a demo, but actually when you see a machine like this, you would have thought there was a lot of people with this kind of technology, but you are almost alone, right? Yeah, we are actually the only ones uh, showing on FESPA this kind of technology that um, is trying to solve for customer you know, issues because we are trying to optimize uh, the finishing workflow. This is always the bottleneck and the pain for the customers. So we are trying to make it a bit more efficient. That's and, the idea behind it. And, uh, and if you look at the market, uh, I, okay, before we talk about the market, basically, when you, when you see all the banners mm -hmm. hanging outside in, uh, in all kind of weather mm -hmm. conditions, they need to be have some kind of strings to them or something yes. like that. Yes. And you're specialized in making sure that you ensure the holes mm -hmm. to be... Yeah, we are you're specialized. You probably explain better than me, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you print the banners, but then you have to make a reinforcement on the edge so the eyelet doesn't get loose. That's where we are. We do a reinforcement with the, with the machine, okay, and then we insert the eyelet say, afterwards because nobody wants to have a banner that is going to fall down because the banner is going to rip off if it doesn't have the correct uh, reinforcement over the edges, okay? So, I mean, what if people don't have machines like this, mm -hmm. how do they do it then? Is it manual? They do it on a manual way. Okay. You can have, you know, on one way, you can have a welding machine, yeah. and then you can take the banner, you have it on the welder, and then you have to roll the banner again, take it to an eyeletting machine. But the advantage of this process is that you have both things together. Yeah. So you have hand welding and eyeletting together, plus slitting on the back. Okay. So we are putting three different processes in line in order to make an efficient uh, process for customers. And that basically means that uh, with an investment in, in uh, one of your, uh, your machines here, you can basically automate a process today yes. that is very labor intensive, right? Very labor intense and slow. And both, slow, yeah, yeah, both yeah, things. yeah. Yes. So it's kind of strange to think of that nobody is really in this market. Is it, is it because they're not exhibiting or is it because you are pretty much alone? We are very much alone. Okay. And all the developments we are making is because we are following you know, customer demands. Yeah. Customers, they will come and say, okay, I would like to have whatever. And then our engineers, they try to figure out if it's possible or not, if we can make it viable in terms of economics. And then, you know, from one year to another, we come always with something new, following just customers, not mm. uh, because we are the smartest guys in town. Tell me a little bit about your history, because how did you get into this market? Oh, it is a big, it's a long story. But to make Bring it short, to me. <laughs> we come from the plastic industry, and we were the first ones uh, making eyelets uh, in plastic, not in metal as everybody. We saw that there were some, you know, niche or specific advantages for clear eyelets, as we like to call them. One is that uh, you can see the color printed underneath, so the banner looks much better than with the metal ones. Okay, and also all the recyclability, environmental aspects, that is becoming more and more important for a product. And then we started about uh, 15 years ago with our automatic equipment machines for eyeliner, and then we have been growing together with our customers trying to automate more the processes. So we started with a fully automatic machine, stand alone on a table, and then we came to something as big as this that can make the life for customers you know, much easier. So that's a bit of a yeah. history. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, but I mean, coming from making uh, eyelets of plastic uh, to uh, make a machine, that is a, that's a step, right? a long way. Yeah. We had to hire engineers to yeah. create an R&D department, but yeah. we thought that uh, we needed to control all the process. Yeah. Because if you make a product and you don't have like the right tooling yeah. to insert them or to put them, or that is not going to work. Okay. So this, the idea is we try to control all the process and we offer a customer you know, a full solution from the consumable, that will be the eyelets, and also for the eyeletting equipment. Mm. And we have four engineers that they design all the equipment, we do installation, trying to make the life for customers, you know, as easy as possible. What I would like you to do now, I would okay. like to see a demo. Okay. But because you have, uh, I, we have to save on the environment, so we, spe we don't waste, uh, use too much uh, of the okay. software. So before we do the live demo, maybe you explain where you put in the, mm -hmm. the material, what the process is, and then Chica will follow you, and okay. you can just tell what you see. We, and can, we can start uh, from this side. Yeah. So customers, you know, they will print the rolls, yeah. and they, you need to remove the rolls from the printer 
Yeah. This is a battery lift, battery operated lifter. Yeah. So it is quite easy to use. You yeah. Just go up and down. So you will come from the printer with your roll. You will load the machine. Yeah. That will be the first step. I just have a stupid question. Okay. And that is just like when I come to printing companies, they have so many lifts already. Is it because it has a spe specific need for for with the with the with the forklift, or is no, it just no, to no. have like more like a one solution from one supplier, or no? We we we, we try to have you know some specific features. For example, this lifter. Yeah. We have a system that uh, these, these ones. Yeah. Yeah. We can have it as it is at the moment in yeah. order to transport the roll safely. Yeah. And then we can do this. Yeah in order to load the printer easily. Yeah, so you yeah. don't have to leave the roll. Yeah, yeah. You know, others they would have a platform or something like that. Yeah. So this will be the first step. Okay. okay, so that is basically to make sure that when you have uh, your entire system mm -hmm. here, basically yes. you have something that really operates finely yes. with it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then we come to the machine. Yeah. We load the roll, yeah. and then... Is that uh, put in on here, or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what we do is uh, we have an air shaft, yeah. same as the printers. Yeah. So we load the roll over there, yeah. and then we pass it here. Yeah. Okay, and then on this gray part, uh, you can see on both sides, yeah. what we do is we start creating what we call the hem. Yeah. Okay, we start pre-folding the material. Is this these ones, or...? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. So that basically creates a fold of the... It starts to create the fold. We yeah. have the guide afterwards on the welder, yeah. but that is helping to create the, the fold, okay? And then we can go this side if you want, because yeah. we will be able to see it better. Yeah. I'm already learning, Rafa. That's good. <laughs> we do that every day. Yeah, yeah, that is good. So, okay, we start creating the form here, and then we have the welders, and this will be the welding guide, okay? Yeah. So we press the both materials and with heat we melt it together okay so is that something that you would also do in a, in a manual process yes so this is actually also a very very important part that mm -hmm. you basically have that welding yeah. directly on the machine yeah we have like three key aspects one will be the welding yeah eyeliting yeah. and a slitting yeah okay that will this is the welding model where we do the reinforcement of the banner yeah okay great once the banner is already welded, okay, you can see Can it I here. ask you a question? I'm, you yes. know, I, say, I, I want to learn. Okay. I can see on your machines that it's built in modules. Is yes. that basically because you can then uh, uh, customize it to a specific printer's need, or is it because you want to be able to extend it in future with other? The idea or? behind this is that we, ha we have to transport it easily, ah, and okay, also so we have to assemble it easily. Ah, okay. All the machine, we have quick connections in terms of electronics and also pneumatics mm. and also these clamps. Mm. So installation, it takes only one day. Oh, that's that's nice. one of the advantages. Yeah. And then we can, when we install a machine like this, we do one day installation and then we do training. That is the, you know, the key part. Of course. Not the installation. Like itself. always, right? Yeah. And then once we have the reinforcement, we come here. You see that we have some marks printed on the banners. Yeah. We is have that a, a, so, so that is something that the printer does yes. in the pre-press, basically. Correct. Right? Yeah. So we have a camera to read the registration marks, yep. and what we are reading are the eyeleting marks and also the cutting marks. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. the system knows where they have to set an eyelet yep. and when they have to cut. Yeah. And you have two. Is it because you always trim two times, or I will show you in a second. Okay. But let me point out something. Yeah. You see that we have a dot here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have a cross oh. here. Yeah. The reason why we have two different marks mm -hmm. is that uh, on this machine, we are going to finish the long edges of the banners, okay? Mm -hmm. If we set an eyelet here, mm -hmm. we won't be able to make the reinforcement on the other machine we have behind. Ah, so that's why. Okay. So we have a mark that the camera is going to read it, but it's not going to do anything with it. Mm. But we will use that mark on the other machine, machine for the operator to know where they have to set the eyelet, okay? Okay. We Let's can check here. that afterwards, right? Correct. So can, yeah, yeah. So we come here and we have two multi-press eyeletting machine, mm -hmm. okay, that they are controlled by the camera. Yeah. So they know exactly where they have to set the eyelets yeah. on both sides at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the welded edge. We have the eyelets. Yeah. And then before you we move on, I'm really yes. curious because you know. I'm, I thought this was so analog, but then I see a very nice computer screen here, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, <laughs> everything is easy to use. Yeah. And also one of the advantages we have is yeah. that we can connect to the machine from our factory. So if you have any kind also of tools remote, or engineer remotely, ah. they can change uh, the marks you need to read. And they can, you know, sometimes the manufacturers of the engines, they will tell us, well, you have to do, you know, 
the firmware, you have to update it. So that is possible to do everything remotely from mm. a factory in Alicante. So we don't have to travel, mm. which is an advantage. Yeah. Unless it's for good wine and good food. <laughs> Always. Always, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're now we're at the end of the machine. We are here on the end of the machine. Yeah. So we have uh, what we call a double cutting system. Yeah. Instead of having a single knife, we have a set of two different knives. Yeah. Okay. And what we do is the camera is going to read these marks, yeah. and the knives are going to cut here and here. So on we the outside this. of each, so it, it, and the distance to the to the line is that set by software or? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's fixed. Yeah. But the advantage of this mm -hmm. is that uh, there are no visual marks of cutting marks uh, on the banner. On the banner, yeah. So we because the banner can move a little bit. Yeah, and, we yeah. leave the banner, the, the marks inside. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then on the finished banner, you have no marks. Yeah, yeah, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We made this following, you know, some customers that at the beginning we were using a single line, yeah. and then we were cutting right in between, yeah, so you were yeah. able to see the mark in one manner and on the other. Yeah, yeah. So, or thin this So drop shit, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that, right? Correct. So, um, okay. let's see the machine. But before okay. before before it runs, I would I'm just one more question. So, okay, how fast is it? Very fast. Very fast. Just to give you an idea, a 50 meter. I mean, board. I like that answer. That's a salesman's <laughs> perspective, right? So it's very fast. As it fast as you want it, right? No, 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 it is very fast because just think about, uh, you know, how much time you are going to invest when you need to make welding, mm. eyeletting and slitting manually. Yeah. A 50 meter roll, it will take about seven minutes to get finished with all... 70? No, seven, seven. Seven minutes. With all the three different processes. In, in manual or... In I would say uh, three, four hours at wow, least. Wow, wow. Yeah, okay. because actually one of the advantages is not that we are only putting things together yeah. in order to be more efficient, yeah. is that we don't have to move the balance from one place <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, to another. The next one, yeah, so, yeah. so basically you can say with that speed, um, and of course there's some investment to it, it's mainly a question about how much you produce daily in yeah. order to justify the investment, right? We have customers that they produce, uh, they print 24 hours, okay. and if they don't have this kind of system, they yeah. won't be able to finish Precisely, manually yeah. the yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah so because if uh, printers are getting faster and faster, if they have to still manually... Uh, we have things. customers that they are using 5 meter printers, yeah. and they are printing multi roll with 3 rolls. Yeah. So that's a huge output. End can, of you, the day. can you do different widths or the system yeah, yeah. widths? Okay, so we can... manufacture the machine in 3 different widths. Yeah. We do it in 1.6, yeah. 2.4, and 3.2, yeah. but we are always adjustable. So okay. we can. You can always go smaller. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see it run, right? Okay. Ruben, we are ready to go. So you're the one that is uh, clicking the start button. Yes. Fantastic. He's our head of engineer. Yeah. So he's the one that designs all our equipment. So we have to move, uh, follow the the process from the beginning, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. So you see that uh, we are creating the hem. Yeah. On the gray part. Yeah. Then the material gets pre-folded to the welder. What we do here is we accumulate the material because we have to stop the banner for eyeliting, but we don't want to stop the welding. Okay, we want okay to so that's like a buffer, way. basically. Yes. Yeah. And then you just you put all in the eyelets in the number yes. one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have eyelets and washers and then the machine will fully automatically supply them. Mm. Okay. And then this will be the output. Pretty amazing, right? I mean, if you look at it. Now we see that there is a cutting mark uh, coming over. Oh yeah. And that was... Uh, this is what we are going to use on yeah, the other, other machine, machine to yeah. set the eyelets on yeah. the short edges. Yeah. So basically, uh, here we are, and we have the... Yeah, we have what we call the seam or the hem. The hem, yeah, The yeah, reinforcement, yeah. Uh, day, because yeah. otherwise, yeah, it if just you pull, uh, yeah, yeah, it would yeah, hit yeah. the material. And, um, I mean, this is now, is it some kind of vinyl or...? Yeah, this is vinyl, yeah. yes. Can it do on different substrates or is it yeah. mainly okay? Yeah, we can do mesh, we can do yeah. PE, yeah. we can do PVC. Yeah. See, I cannot figure out how to uh, <laughs> fold it correctly. <laughs> See, that's that's how stupid a journalist is, right? No. <laughs> so but at least all, I can do interviews and no, stuff. stupid we questions to, for you, right? <laughs> we have four vinyl because you can see. I mean, yeah, you can see almost invisible. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. 
And what about, uh, because I mean, everybody's talking about envir environmental impact. Is that something that you have been maybe using? In, I mean, what is the... Uh, yeah, what we use is um, we use 75% raw material and then 25% in recycle okay. already okay. because we have a, a zero waste production. Okay. And also this kind of files, they can be recycled. And also with uh, PP and PE banners, they can be sent uh, to the same waste stream, so there is no need to separate them. Okay. So that's an advantage for many customers. Yeah, yeah. And of course, if you have a vinyl banner like this, you still have to, I mean, to put it in uh, some kind of good recycling. Uh, yeah, thing yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, the yeah. banners are yeah. PVC banners are. Yeah. They have the problems to recycle, but when you have this kind of file, it's, it's always easy compared with the metal ones. Yeah. Let's go and check the last. Okay, let's go to the yeah, other. Yeah. So, um, so. Now you take these banners. Okay. So what we have done here is uh, we have finished the long side of the banners, and then we have to finish the short sides. Okay. So what we have here, it is a different machine, but with the same concept. So we have a welding machine together with an eyeliner, but in a smaller scale. Okay. So this will be the banner we have just finished, and then what we are going to do is to finish the short edges. Okay. Ruben, whenever you want. We are setting the eyelets on the corner. This is the eyelet that we didn't set on the other machine because otherwise we won't be able to make the folding. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of the... Yes, it will be the end of the banner. Let's yeah, say. yeah, okay, I understand that. Yeah. So basically when you sell this, if you want to have full uh, productivity, you Correct. would basically need to have yes. two machines, right? Sometimes the customer, they will use their existing equipment to finish the short edges. Yeah. But thinking about uh, you know efficiency, yeah. it will be better to invest in this kind of machine yeah. because yeah. we are putting together two different processes. Yeah. Obviously, you need an operator here. Of course, yeah. But it is always But possible. on the other hand, since this is so automated, you don't need an operator doing that, of course, yes. right? I was just wondering, uh, we spoke about before that um, it, to some extent, requires uh, a certain volume before you can mm -hmm. justify the investment. How big or how much production should you have before it's worthwhile looking into? When we think about uh, the big machine, we call it all-in-one. It is not uh, really the amount of banners you make on a monthly basis. It's that if you have banners that are repetitive in terms of width, that's when it makes sense. If all your banners are different, it okay, doesn't it does make, make sense, sense. because okay. you will have to adjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, for example, you make like for one customer 200 banners, for another one 500, as we have many customers doing that, that's when it really makes sense in terms yeah. of efficiency. Yeah. Because this is so fast compared yeah. with the traditional method. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and how is it business-wise? I mean, uh, you're you're like 35-person company. And yes. Uh, is it growing or how is it? You said there was a change uh, post the COVID that... Uh, no, no, we, we, what we see is that automation. customers are demanding more automation. The amount of quoting we are doing at the moment, I mean, without having been in FESPA yet, is amazing compared with other years. We just hired, you know, two more engineers uh, at the factory because we have to cope, uh, you know, with the orders. And when the customers, they want... Um, they decide to make an investment in this kind of equipment, they want it right now. Of course. Because they have the jobs. Of course. They yeah. don't want to wait six or seven months in order to get the machine delivered. And can you get, uh, can you deliver fast or? Let's say that uh, our normal times before COVID, uh, they were three months. Yeah, okay. And now it is a bit run about four. Okay. But we are creating a new process yeah. that we will be able to deliver machines in just about two months. When I look at the machine like this, it seems that there's a lot of uh, iron work in different shapes mm -hmm. and bendings into that. I think take that is a lot of processes developing uh, I mean going into making the product, right? Or yeah, one of the, let's say, secrets of our company is that we design all the equipment. Oh, so okay. everything you see here, it has been designed by our engineers mm. and assembled by us. Okay. okay. Mm. We don't have CNC equipment, laser cutting, we subcontract those parts, yeah. but all the design, that is the key part of the process, yeah, yeah, we do yeah. everything. Okay. And exactly. we have very experienced people with uh, background in, you know, laser cutting and things like that. So they, when we design something, we know from the beginning how it has to be made in order to be cost effective. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. Rafa, I think it was a great meeting mm -hmm. you. I think it was great to learn. Oh, uh, thank you for coming, really. Have you seen anything like this, uh, Chica? I don't think so, right? No? <laughs> He's uh, shaking, uh, nodding his head. So, well, so thank Rafa, you for your time. It was great. And nice to see you, really. Nice to see you, too. And thank you for Inkis for coming here. Okay. Always. It was great to see you. Thank you. So, um, 
Now, I said EFI before, that was a lie, because I missed, I, I screwed up the planning, so to speak. I didn't screw up the planning, I screwed up my memory. So now uh, we're going to EFI for the second last uh, live broadcast of today. So from here, from Plastic Gourmet at, uh, with Rafa, thank you very much.